gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another Bullet Knife Review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a great game on the PlayStation 1, and today I'm going to be reviewing the sequel of another great game which wasn't released in the UK. So today, I'm going to be reviewing Parasite Eve 2. Enjoy the review. So, let's start by talking a bit more about the game. So this was released in 2000, in August of 2000 in Europe, published and developed by Squaresoft. And it's the sequel to Parasite Eve 1, which seems a bit weird, seeing as we didn't get that in Europe, we only got we only got the second game. So for people in Europe getting this, we felt a bit left out, unless you had a modified console and you was able to get old of American imports or played, or played uh, well, copied games more or less. So, what is this game? It is a, well, action RPG, survival horror, like, type game in it. And when you go into battles, for, for instance, you have the RPG elements, you get XP at the end, you can, you know, use magic and stuff like that. But the survival horror aspect comes into the way that the game plays. So, but we'll come back to that in a moment. So let's go on about the... Let's go on about a bit of the story. So you are, Aya Brea, a member of MIST, the Mitochondrial Investigation and Suppression Team. And you find out there's been a disaster at the first location where you end up in, in the game, the Ark Roleplates Tower in LA. You are sent to find out what happened there, more or less. When you get there, you literally see that the shit has hit the fan. You see, as soon as you get there, you see the plane cutscene of the plane helicopter coming down blown up in the middle of the street it's all barricaded off and as soon as you enter the building itself you just see all these SWAT members just lying there blooded up just complete and utter chaos has happened in there while investigating you come across a new breed of NMC or neo mitochondrial creature and it is your job to really discover what has gone on in what has gone on in this area so within the game you are taken to various different areas. Um, you're taken to Driftfield, which is a desert-like town with motel, shops, and stuff like that. It's a very enclosed, small town, but it does give off a creepy atmosphere, which is quite good, seeing as most survival horror always relies on dark, dingy areas, but this gives you this bright, desert town, which is just littered with monsters and you get this eerie atmosphere that something else is going on uh, you get to go to the mines underneath your field which leads you on to the last part which is like a I want to say more of a biological research area where the NMCs are created so as I mentioned it is a action RPG style game with a lot of interesting ideas now, let me uh, clarify on that as well, what these interesting ideas are. So, for example, the RPG elements come in, as say, at the end of the battle. So you are rewarded XP, uh, BP, which is battle points, which you can use to purchase weapons throughout the game. Uh, you also, you know, you and how that, and it all changes on how many times you got hit, how quick the battle was won, what, st what tactics used. You can also use magic, so... With, in, with the RPG elements in there, you are able to, you know, use different types of magic things. So you've got something called Parasite Energies. And you've got Fire and Wind, which are the more offensive types. And then you've got Earth and Water, which are the more defensive types. So, for example, Fire will obviously shoot projectile to them. Wind gives off, like, some barrier around you, which causes damage. And then you've also got water, which is more like your healing abilities, and you know you can flush out your system with from viruses with that, as well as with uh, earth elements, which you know can make you do more damage. They they give you more buffs, as such with that. As I mentioned, the weapons in the game aren't a typical RPG affair. This is set in the modern world in a place that actually exists in LA. So your weapons are guns. Armor, so you get to choose from like assault rifles and guns, uh, some machine guns, and the armor that you get as well is more I want to say more SWAT type armor, more actual battle armor rather than this, you know, swords and shields type malarque. So, as for when you're fighting, you are able to move wherever you want in the area that you're in, 
so you can easily avoid enemies and then you can shoot them from afar or you can get far enough away to either heal yourself with your magic or items that you can equip and you know you're able to you know cause some damage you can even change weapons on the fly depending on if the weapons that you have have been put in your armor as such so if it, if you've got them on your armor then you can uh, then can change weapon mid weapon mid mid fight and be fine with that each weapon has a uh, various types of armor i mean uh, ammo so like for example uh, the handgun uses normal 9 mm ammo and then you can get this other stuff called uh, 9 mm hydra which does more damage you can also get other stuff to help stun your enemies, stuff like uh, pepper sprays, combat lights are good for if you're in dark areas and this bats are all like that. You can just, as long as you've got a torch att attachment on the gun what you're using, you can press that, flash of light, it'll damage them and it'll stun them as well so that they're handy to use in that. So when you, so the battles do come and aren't randomised so they are set in place but whenever you leave there and you go back there'll always be enemies there but you've got that full area to run around like with any other action RPG. As with the controls though, the controls have a Resident Evil style control scheme like you know the traditional tank controls so you have that in the game which can make it a bit difficult in places especially if you're in an enclosed area you can find yourself just running around and hitting walls constantly um, what I recommend doing with the game is not using the analog sticks, is just using the D-pad and having auto run on. That way you get much more control of your character in the game. And saving in that respect is done as well using a pay phone. Like in the first Parasite Eve game, you would use a phone to save. And also they'll give you, like, might give you some hints or what your next mission is within the area which you're in. So... As for the as for the game itself, what bad points does it have? Well I mentioned it's got tank style controls. Sometimes it can become a bit clunky to use, I've mentioned that. Um, sometimes the enemies can seem really fast, so you find it you find it difficult to get enough distance between you and them to heal yourself, which can cause in a lot of frustration, especially some of them which knock you down onto the floor. You know, and it takes a while for you to get up, and that'll actually stop, like, your healing. So you will use stuff like penicillin and stuff like that to help heal yourself health drinks. And one of the funniest things is, one of the things that uh, increases your MP is Coca-Cola. So a little bit of advertisement in there as well. Probably why it got sold over here, because I had a bit of advertisement, but I had a bit more money behind it. But yeah, that's the game. Uh, the game you can complete in a book, I would say... I mean, it took me probably about 10 hours to go through it. It's not a long game at all for an RPG, but the story is well contained. It is very good, and it's a great sequel to go along with, you know, go along with the first game. It does lead on quite naturally. Um, graphically, the game is stunning. You can tell that by some of the cutscenes that it gives you. For example, when the monster's changing, you see, like, you know, you have the cutscene of the little girl, like this woman, she falls onto the floor, starts screaming, you see her hands twitch, and then her body starts changing into it. And that last part where you see the head, like literally the mouth area is split, and then she turns into the monster. It is amazing. Um, I, I can't say any more good things really about this game. I do recommend picking it up. You can get it for a good price with it being released in multiple areas so it's not a it's not an uncommon game like Parasite Eve 1 is in your Europe you are able to easily get older and you won't shouldn't be looking to pay any more than five to ten pounds or whatever the equi whatever your equivalent is for that. So I hope you liked my review of Parasite Eve 2. I said it is a worthwhile game picking up and is it is worth getting. Just it it brings me a lot of happiness. It's a game that I always enjoy playing. I always come back to it once or twice a year. So it's a game that I constantly go through and I do really enjoy it. So it's a game that I do want to share with you guys. <clears throat> so yeah, hope you like my review. If you like it, like it. Um, if you dislike it, dislike it. Uh, tell me your opinions on this game. If you've played it, do you enjoy it? What are your problems with it? Or anything like that. Just leave it in the comments section below and keep it civil. And yeah, if you like my videos, subscribe to see more of them. If you want me to see, if you want me to review Parasite Eve One, I'll be more than happy to. Just again, give me a, give me some likes, and then I'll uh, 
get that done and that, and subscribe as well so and feel free to follow me as well on collections.com at bulletmarv <coughs> on twitter as well at bulletmarv and then uh, on facebook at bulletmarv retro reviews all them will be left in the description below as well so you can go on them and my facebook will allow you to interact with me more personally and a lot more easier than on facebook than on um, youtube so yeah as i say at the end of every video ladies and gentlemen boys and girls keep on gaming